What's up, you guys? It's your girl, Rachel Joy, a.k.a. The Singing Chef. Oh, sorry. I, I have to stop calling myself The Singing Chef. It's such a habit. Formerly known as The Singing Chef and the former owner of Hope's Kitchen Eateries, this is my YouTube channel. Today, we're doing something a little different. If you ever read the About section in my bio, um, you'll see that I, uh, a little bit about me, a little bit about my culinary background, um, and the fact that I retired after seven years of a successful chef career, and I have switched careers over to being a paralegal. We're gonna, I'm, I'm planning on doing more videos about career oriented stuff, like my, you know, my adventures as a chef, stuff that I'm doing in school now, um, you know, going to school to be a paralegal, things like that. But you'll also see that I touch a little bit on my spirituality. Um, I am the only Christian ever from a hundred year span of Freemasons, um, Eastern stars, uh, Yorubas, also known as Ifas, um, and, uh, Animus. And, um, I wanted to specifically, instead of doing a whole video on what it was like, cause I, I lived with that for over 20 years, um, until I finally broke out and got away from that. And there's still been some residue from coming from that as a family of origin, but, um, overall, my salvation has been definite and uh, has shown evidence and I have uh, repented of any of this of, of the sins that I grew up with, you know, living in that kind of family. But um, I wanted to touch today specifically on what it says in the title below, um, what it's like, what it was like growing up in a house with uh, a Freemason um, as a Christian. And um, it was very, I'm going to keep this video short. You know, I like to keep my videos short, 10, 15 minutes. Um, and I'll get to straight to the point here. So um, specifically, I come from generations and generations of, uh, of different types of witches and warlocks in my family. Um, they all believe in sorcery and divination. And one specific way that they do it is that they pretend to be Christians. They pretend to be ministers. They pretend to be in ministry. They pretend. And if you ask them, they will say, oh, I'm a lector at a Catholic church, which is not a Christian church, by the way. Catholics are not Christians. That's a whole nother video. But they'll say, oh, I'm a kitchen. I'm in kitchen ministry at the church, or I'm an usher at the church, or, you know, I'm a singer at the church or something like that. Or I, oh, the, the, and you know, they, you, you would even, I have even witnessed my family members praying and they will talk about Jesus and they will be fully demonically possessed. They will not like, <laughs> they will be fully demonically possessed because of their religion that they practice. And if you don't know the Bible, which unfortunately I grew up with that, I didn't always know what the word said. They will be giving you false doctrine and false teachings, trying to persuade you to do things that are demonic or believe things that are demonic be, and, and while pretending to be Christians, i.e. a false prophet, which Jesus talks about in um in Matthew, I believe Matthew chapter six, um where it talks about uh you can tell a tree by its fruit. You can't you know you you can't pick, uh, uh well I know it says in Luke you can't pick figs from thorn bushes or grapes from thistles. Um and Matthew says you, you can tell a, a tree by its fruit or in other words you can tell a, a person by their actions. So if someone's portraying to be a Christian, you know the Bible talks about test the spirit about the spirit. So specifically, let's get to the point here. So my grandfather, my great grandfather, my biological great grandfather was a 33rd degree Mason. And um, for, for you guys who don't know, Freemasonry, you might have heard Jay-Z is a Mason. Um, a lot of people in the music industry are in, into Freemasonry. Um, but Beyonce is a Yoruba. She is, she is, she is into the Yoruba Ifa religion, uh, which I'll get into another, in another video because my biological mother was a Yoruba um, I think she was a Yoruba teacher, like a Yoruba priestess lady or whatever. She, she People came to her for the Yoruba stuff. So that's a whole nother s subject. But specifically, my biological great-grandfather was a uh, 33rd degree Mason. And what that means is he was eligible to start lodges. He was eligible to induct people into uh, Freemasonry. He was eligible to refer women to becoming an Eastern star. Um, he was the he was the big shot um, in uh, in Freemasonry. So that's definitely something that um, that came up a lot for um, for me um, growing up because my that same grandfather professed to be a Christian. 
Um, he woke up every morning and you would hear him say, in Jesus name, amen, when he was praying. So I, at first, did not, he, he, he never, he never really, grow, when I was a little girl, openly talked about his masonry. However, you just knew something was wrong because certain rooms, um, like some people might hear of a feng shui or a zen garden. It's all the same thing. If you're not worshiping Jesus, you're worshiping the devil, same thing. So he would, uh, when you come into the, the family room, it was set up into this feng shui setting filled with masonry objects or filled with this divination type of objects. So you would have, um, and like some people, like I grew up in Louisiana, you have voodoo dolls. So like, for instance, you would have this, uh, you would have like old baby bottles from certain relatives that were still alive, that were, that were preserved in certain corners. You would have um, the same picture of him and his 33rd degree masonry uniform when he first became a 33rd. It would be posted, the same picture would be posted in different areas of the same room. And that is, I think, meant to generate a sort of worship of whatever false god that it is. And specifically, he had an induction of a Masonic temple that really did not exist anywhere but in that house. So he was inducting our home to be a Masonic temple um, versus going to rent a building, which probably, I don't know why. And also, my grandfather never really had a job. My, grand, my grandfather's job was to be a Mason. The Masons paid him lots of money to continuously um, run that Masonic Lodge, which was our house, because people did come over, Masons did come over um, for induction uh, references or things like that. And I didn't learn that until I got older because I was very confused because the same man that's going to church and doing ministry is a very, uh, he's like a high priest of masonry. Um, now, I remember when I got older and I would do research, um, and of course I was saved by the time, I would ask my grandfather, I would be like, um, Pa, why don't you tell me about the Masons? Why don't you tell me, you know, why you have these pictures and why, and why don't you tell me this, of the different things that are going on with the Masonry? And um, he would become filled with the demonic spirit. And then he would say, I can't tell you, I'll be blackballed. And he would say it with death in his eyes. Like he bug his eyes out saying, I can't tell you anything or else I'll be blackballed. He's filled with the demonic spirit and he walks off. And he had a, he when, whenever, that's when I knew something was wrong where he probably wasn't a Christian because all of a sudden something would possess him and he would take on a different personality whenever you brought up the details of his Masonic practices. Um, I would do the research and I would see that, you know, and, and according to a family legacy, he would travel to New Orleans, Louisiana for these bohemian style lodges where they would do detestable acts in New Orleans. And he was very proud of that. But when you ask him the details of, you know, connecting the false God to the, mis the Masonic practices, um, you know, he would um, definitely become with that, possessed with that spirit. And um, honestly, he would become possessed quite often. And he lived to be 93 years old and he died a very uh, dark death. Um, he got murdered and that was, that was part of his uh, Masonic rituals. Um, I have another family member. My That was my biological great grandfather. My biological grandfather, he was also a Mason. Um, I think towards the end of his life, I'm not, I don't think he attended any lodges, but he was still um, a, a practicing person of that particular religion. And um, he also died a mysterious death. Um, I've seen that at least three times with Eastern Stars and Masons where they, des they, they die these mysterious dark deaths. Um, and I don't know what, what else you expect if you're, if you're serving the devil. I mean, come, come on, bro. Like, why are you shocked? Um, but I've seen that over and over again. Now, where it, what it was like for me as a Christian, I was the victim of a lot of false teaching. Um, I was under the impression that it was easy to fall for a false prophet. I was, it was easy to believe he was, he was truly a Christian and that he was truly praying to Christ. Um, but whenever I would ask him specifically, are you saved? You know, when did you accept Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? He never really could answer those in detail of, I have accepted and confessed and become baptized. He was never fully able to answer that, but he would stay, he would stay with these rituals, which, you know, as a Christian, Christ, Christianity is not a ritualistic uh, religion. It's not. It's fully based on faith in Christ and the Holy Spirit to give you the power over sin. 
and you know different things like you know uh, you get taken up in the rapture when Jesus comes back and um, you have power over sin and you're able to, you're able to live a godly life and you know different different you, you obey the commands of God that are literally throughout the Bible especially the Ten Commandments and for me I lived a life where I was very confused for over 20 Ooh, maybe let me see I got saved at six, I got saved at six years old by the way I got saved at, at six years old um and uh, I want to say I did not get redeemed until about uh maybe 21 years later so what that did in my life was I learned that that was a spirit of perversion it was a spirit of sorcery a spirit a spirit of divination that not only controlled my great grandfather and my grandfather was also a mason but it also controlled that household and it was a familiar spirit that followed me throughout my life so i could never overcome that spirit until i repented of the sins that would invite that spirit into my life like for instance i stopped keeping crucifixes in my house i stopped um feng shuiing the home like you know i stopped uh, honoring, you know, dead pets or, or dead relatives with pictures and, you know, and, and, and maybe gathering their favorite things around their pictures, things like that. Things that I did not know were related to masonry and Yoruba, which we'll get into another topic. They do that. Um, you know, I stopped doing that and it stopped bringing that spirit into my life and, uh, praying every day and, you know, learning that it's about a relationship with God, um, and specifically a relationship with God, the father, a relationship with Jesus Christ and a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Um, that has truly, uh, re you know, really given me a lot of freedom for, you know, the word of God does say, I'm not, I'm not sure. I forgot where, but I, in fact, I know for sp specifically in John chapter 10, um, the beginning of John chapter 10, it says the enemy comes to steal, kill and destroy. And Jesus goes on to say, I have come that they may have a rich and satisfying life. Or in another version of the of that of that same verse, it says, I've come to get that they may have life and life more abundantly. Um, so it's 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 very important to what I've learned from growing up in a house where not only was I living with a 33rd degree mason that was lying and saying he was a Christian, um, you know, I learned that it's important for me to get rid of sin in my life it's important for me to get rid of false teachings um because the enemy you know especially you know through those spirits of sorcery and divination they'll lie and say that it's a part they'll, they'll try to twist scripture and make you think that that is a part of christianity when it's not and um it's very important to, you know the bible says be sober be vigilant for the enemy is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour and um you know one thing i've learned is i have to be vigilant that uh that's that that spirit you know does not lure me into situations to be comfortable even around people who are freemasons or yorubas or animists or wick or wiccans or luciferians or whatever like i have to not be comfortable because at the end of the day they all worship satan and i am a christian i worship jesus and um it's up to me to do exactly what the bible says and that has truly given me power over that situation um because after my grandfather died, the devil was still tricking me <laughs> into thinking, oh, well, your grandfather's your guardian angel, and he was definitely a Christian, and he wants you to, you know, to remember him. So I'm sitting here thinking my grandfather's walking with me, talking with me, guiding me. And the reality was, I even walked into my room one day, my bedroom, and it smelled like my grandfather's bedroom so because i was a victim of false teaching i'm thinking oh this is my grandfather letting me know he's with me no no that was a demonic spirit <laughs> messing with me making me comfortable in divination so i truly in order to be redeemed had to be had to fully uh first of all i prayed i was like god please purify my heart and I, and it doesn't matter what the prayer is as long as you are seeking god to help you the Bible talks about how it's good to ask God for help and trust that he will save you. Um, and, and, you know, it's not about a specific prayer, a spe specific ritual. It's about obeying God's commandments. And, you know, that truly has redeemed me for not falling victim to that spirit again, but to also discern um, when that spirit of divination, whether it comes in any form, whether it be Freemasonry, Yoruba, whatever, um, that it's not invited into my life. I mean, that way I can truly have the rest of God and I can truly rest on the Sabbath, rest, you know, and trust in God, rest in his will. And it's, you know, and truly catch myself when I'm sinning and, uh, and live sinless like Jesus. 
Um, so anywho, this has been my short video of what it was like growing up with a uh, 33rd degree Mason, 33rd degree Freemason. Um, and uh, I hope it was informative. By the way, check out, this is a two strand twist. Uh, this, it's about a week and a half old. Um, I have it in a puff ponytail, obviously. My hair is very long, as you can tell. Um, so we're going to do, I'm going to try to do, if you want to check out my video on my natural hair care products and tools that I use, I have three C hair, as you can see, my hair is not really, um, not really, uh, doesn't have a too tight of a curl pattern. And it, you know, of course changes curl patterns because it's usually very coily, but right now it obviously is not. If you want to check out the length, this is an idea of how long my hair is. So you can check out my previous video on that, but this is what I was talking about in the other video about how my hair, um, is uh what is it it's definitely um it grows out instead of down and i accept my hair the way god makes it to be which is in line with the ten commandments like going back to what we were talking about originally in the video one of the ten commandments is not coveting pretty much anything your neighbor has you know like your neighbor's ox your neighbor's uh uh, uh whatever you know anything your neighbor has so coveting my neighbor's hair or i eat a white girl's hair or Indian girl's hair, or a Peruvian girl's hair, or whatever type of hair that, that God did not give me, that is a sin. So I live my hair, I live my life loving my hair today and exploring what my hair can do and having fun with that. But more, most importantly, it's not about fancy hairstyles or jewelry or clothes. It's about my gentle and quiet spirit that God is, uh, is, 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 is giving me. Um, through obeying his commandments, which is another benefit of repenting from repenting from the false teachings that the Masons tried to influence me with through my grandfather and living a life that Jesus approves of um, and that Jesus wants me to have. So I hope this was helpful. Um, you know, I hope I, I uh, my testimony gives you guys some example of what it's like. Um, and uh, feel free to just, uh, you know, leave comments if you have questions. Uh, and that you want me to specifically answer that was not covered in this video, um, or if you need scriptural references um, to the things that I discussed about in this video. Alrighty, take care. Bye, guys.